How are you folks? It's Ty Cats we'll play here again, and welcome back to NASCAR Thunder 2004. Oh boy, so the last race was at Atlanta Motor Speedway, and we came away with a 12th place finish. It could have been much worse than that. Tire wear was just all over the place, and uh, somehow we, we, we finished our sponsorship obligations. We finished in the top 20. We qualified on pole, which was inside the top five. I know I've been saying that the uh, I need to qualify on pole to get the uh, the sponsor objective. I forgot it's actually just fifth place. And of course, our associate sponsor, which is pretty much a artificial package deal with White Tails Unlimited, who want us to rank 15th in earnings, and I think we're like eighth or ninth in earnings, so we're all good there. Meanwhile, we have 3.7 million in the bank. Holy cow, and I think we have some work to do in the shop. So let's see, we've got one race till we're building chassis number seven, which is great. Um, let's see, if we overhaul this, I'd, let's see. So how long would it take to overhaul this for two races? Oh, God, that's a lot of money. But it does increase the tire wear to one. What about this? Interesting. But that doesn't make any sense, though. But this is going to have a tire grip of 69, and that's going to have a tire grip of 72. It's got to be because of our stupid builder. It's upset. Let's see. His happiness is... Screw it. Let's get rid of him. Let's get someone else. Hmm. Let's see. What if, it, if we did this? Well, I wonder what he would say on the part. See chassis number. See that's see this would be a 66. Oh crap! We better get Heinz back because we need to have people who are happy on our team. Yeah, let's go hire him again. His happiness is terrible, but it's 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 affecting our parts, man. Because the new part we're building is going to be worse than the ones we actually have. That makes no sense. So, I guess we're going to go ahead and overhaul this. I mean, we have the money to spend. I'm not worried about it. So, we'll just overhaul that and get that back up. Um, let's see. We need to... Let's see. We'll just repair this. It'd be much cheaper. Two races. We'll go ahead and repair that. And then the body shop. Finally, we're getting some extra equipment in the body shop. Oh, my God. So that's going to be a terrible downforce rating compared to the other one. We'll go ahead and uh, just repair it. Two rates. There we go. Yeah. I have two really good downforce bodies, which is really going to help us. Uh, definitely at the Speedway tracks. Sponsorship's good. Team, I mean, I don't know what to do with our chassis builder because... I don't think you get a new set of people until you complete a shop edition, so I'm guessing once we get the skid pad, we'll be able to get a new guy in the chassis shop. But we're going to be running our normal uh, White Tails Unlimited paint scheme. We're going to Phoenix. Going to need a lot of tire grip and a lot of tire wear. Oh boy, it's going to get uh, kind of crazy. But we got a 75 overall car. Let's go to Arizona. All right, folks, so we qualified on pole here at Phoenix. So it's a one-race event here every year. It's the uh, fall of 2004. And last year, man, last year we uh, snickered out a top three finish, the best finish in 2003 for us, which was a third-place uh, finish. Well, we're going back to uh, the Checkered Auto Parts 500 once again. We're on pole today, which is like a, just a gargantuan number for poles, but... One thing that concerns me is the tire wear here. And I've noticed the last few times we've set our tire wear to be lower, the lowest, as low as possible, as you can see um, if I did this. So our tire pressure, see, if I were to lower it all the way down, our tire wear would be lower, right? It'd be at 30 PSI with tire wear at the lowest. But if we put it back to 18, you can see clearly we have much more handling not much more, but a good amount more handling. So, I'm going to take a risk today, guys. I'm going to take a risk. We're going to put more handling in the race car and see how that goes. Um, I mean, we're, we're pretty much trimmed out for handling. I don't know, man. Do we do we risk it? Because the tire wear is going to eat us up, man. I don't know, man. I don't know. If we lower the tire wear, we can fix the acceleration. Man. 
do we go with the, do we go with the higher tire wear and lower or higher handling and see if that helps us? You know what? I'm not I'm not taking that risk. I, I just I'm not confident in our tire wear. But what we'll, we'll do is we will increase our acceleration right there. We'll increase that if we need it and make it a little bit better. We will um, adjust that on the pit stop. Anyways, let's get the checkered auto parts 500 from Phoenix underway. Joe Moore and Barney Hall from the beautiful Arizona desert at the One Mile Phoenix International Raceway for today's Checker Auto Parts 500K. Tell us more about this unique track, Barney. Boy, it's beautiful here, right at the base of the Australia Mountains, and this is quite an interesting racetrack. First, it's known as the world's fastest one mile oval. Add to that the fact that each corner is slightly different, and it all adds up to some great racing. The 82 car really stepped it up in qualifying this week. You're right, Joe, and what a welcome relief this must be. This team has been working hard all year, but it seems they can never catch a break in qualifying. This time, they're starting up front. Kenny Wallace hasn't made much of a move in the point so far. And how frustrating that must be. You're working just as hard as everyone else, yet you just can't seem to finish well on race days to gain the valuable points you need. These guys need a good finish just to regain their confidence as a team. Engines are fired here at Phoenix. We're in Avondale, Arizona, where Tony Stewart, who is going to win the 2004 Winston Cup Championship and his third straight title. Um, my goodness. So we're on pole again. Our car's got speed, man, but we made some last minute adjustments. I thought about taking the risk, going for but having a higher tire wear for a little bit better acceleration. But I was looking at it more and more. Our tire wear is our biggest, uh, you know, issue on our setups. So we have to prioritize that, prioritize that until we can get a better, uh, you know, R&D package from that. But anyway, though, so, oh God, what is going on with our race car? Oh Jesus, we're not even out of third gear. Now we're up to fourth. What is going on with the race car, man? I don't even know what happened there. We were like in third gear for the entire first quarter. I do not remember that happening. Okay. Car's very loose on entry, but we need that. We need that to be able to make these flat corners a good drive off. You gotta have a car that can hook. Uh, definitely our acceleration's a little too high, I think. I don't know. We're going to have to run with it. I mean, if we can just get a top 20 today, that'd be great. I do not think we're going to have anything for a top 5, even though we're running third. I feel like tire wear is really going to hurt us here. But who knows? Last year, we caught an amazing caution, and that allowed us to just steal a top 5 from these top cup guys. But yeah, no question, Shades of Bristol, our engine is redlining much more than it needs to. But tire wear, man, it's just going to kill us here. I know it. It's just like New Hampshire, man. Tire wear is just going to be scorching. But on the bright side, though, this is one of the shortest races of the schedule. Uh, it's, I think, in all honesty, I think the real cup race is only like 300 miles, I think. But when they say it's the 500, they're talking about 500, I think, kilometers, I think, or something like that. So... Um, it's not really a long, long race, so I'm hoping that that will actually help us in our fuel run and tire run. You see, it's just the car is sliding around. I don't know if we want to make the car tighter. That would that would, that would help our landing, but it's going to kill our exit. But at this point, I'm willing to try anything. But I do like how our car enters three and four. Very, uh, I'd say we're, we're able to get kind of deep in the corner, and that really helps us, you know, just gain on the leaders. But one and two, where our entry is just not good enough. I'll see how the car kind of tapers out as the run goes along. If it gets looser, then obviously we're going to have to tighten it up. But if it gets tighter, then we might be okay. I, I think it's going to get looser, though. I think it is. Because 
sometimes it's weird the 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 way the tires wear in this game your car will get tighter meaning that you can't you know push as hard in the corner as you want but then it'll get loose and you can't even do anything with the car so it's like which way is the tires going to fall is it going to get looser is it going to get tighter i don't know but we're dropping off the pace from tony stewart and jeff gordon who is out front today I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm calling Tony Stewart our champion because he's running second, right? The only other guy that had a, has a mathematical shot at the championship is uh, Jeff Gordon. Well, guess what? Jeff Gordon's only one spot ahead of Tony Stewart. Bonus points and all, he might gain 10 points on Tony should he finish uh, where he's at right now. He might gain 10, 15, maybe 20 points. That's it. That's it. He has 140-something points to make up, so... I really don't see any problem uh, with Tony winning this championship. Should he DNF? That's one thing. But there's the odds of him DNF three straight races as we just get completely just pitted, pit maneuver there pretty much. Um, it's too early to pit. It's too early. We got a lot of damage on the car. I would love to pit right then, but I just I don't have confidence in a race car to make that time back up because we're gonna have to be doing some green flag stops anyways. But, um, yeah, so it's a 31-lap event. The car is extremely loose now because of the damage. Lost a lot of downforce on the rear. It's a 31-lap event. Um, car, yeah, we're going to have to tighten this car up, man. I can't drive this. Okay, oh, goodness. Okay, Jarrett's going to lead him off. The cat's going down pit road. We got more than enough fuel. Since that ca the pace laps happened during caution, we were able to kind of save a little bit so we could pit a little early. Man, man, oh man, this car is just garbage, bro. Right now, it's just it's just so loose. Yeah, we're going to have to tighten this thing up. All right. We're coming down pit road. I can't handle it. any more of this. I can't. All right, uh, repair damage, yes. Uh, tighten the race car up. And, um, yeah, we're, we're just gonna have to run with it, man. I'm gonna have to repair it because I don't have a choice. If I don't repair it, then we're not gonna have a car that's gonna do anything. You know, realizing it, I could have pitted during that caution, and if I would have caught another caution, I could save that extra lap or two I lost. Have the track position, but I, I, I just we're not good on fuel mileage, man. We're not. Uh, Eighteen point four second stop, not good. Ugh, yeah, we're gonna be deep in the uh, field because of that slow pit stop, but it's okay. It is okay. We're gonna fight through it. We're gonna keep digging and see what we can come up with here in Phoenix. Cars much tighter now. So that should help our tires not bald so quickly. But who knows? I'm hoping that handling from our chassis and our downforce package is actually going to help the car turn on these very flat corners. Low banking. Low banking. But it's, it's just a matter of protecting your car and working your way through the field because we're going to be down a lot of positions here, man. That slow pit stop is going to kill us. One thing that might be in our favor, though, is that we just got to get a top 20. That might be one thing we can kind of not worry so much about. I mean, look how, how deep we can actually go in the corner because our car is not wrecking loose. So I, I really think that might have been a good adjustment. We're gonna make a little contact with Stanton Barrett's Ford. He's gonna go up the block. I gotta get around these cats, man. Okay, more cats are pitting. Oh, sorry, Gordon. Sorry. Oh boy, I don't know if these guys are pitting or not. I don't know. No. Okay, floor. But yeah, we just gotta get these positions back, man. Try to get to the top 20. That's all we need. On the bright side, though, I'm oh, sorry, Stanton Barrett. On the bright side, our sponsor on the side, which is um, Whitetails Unlimited, just like on the hood, 
all they require, or is it the hood sponsor? I, I, I know one of them, right? Uh, it just requires that we're 15th in earnings. I've noticed, even though when we have a outside the top 20 finish, our sponsor is still happy. And I think the reason because of that is because we're getting the 15th in earnings objective. So that's making them happy. So in a way, it's almost like you can do no wrong, that your sponsor is almost going to be happy no matter what. Which is very good. Because that means we might actually be able to, you know, have a few mulligans and our sponsor not jump ship. Meanwhile, I just hope we can get past three more cars here. There's two, there's two more down there. Just want to get a top 20. There we go. 19th. We should be able to get Michael Waltrip here. Uh-oh, here comes Ryan Newman. There we go. 18th. Alright, so we cycled back to 18th. We pitted when we were, what, realistically about 15th. We were about 13th or 14th, but there were some cats who pitted before then, so that were ahead of us. So realistically, we pitted from when we were about 15th. We lost three spots. We got a smoker up here, so that's going to be up to 17th. Maybe that'd bring out a caution. It's going to be Matt Kenseth's four. He's smoking. Tires are worn. Man, next year when we get our tire wear upgrade, let me tell you. We're gonna really do some damage because that's one thing we really need to work on is our tire wear. Our engine power's there, man. If Michael Waltrip just sends it on in there, and that's something I would do. Uh, leaders are pitting. What? Okay. Some uh, interesting strategy here in Arizona. Leaders are pitting. Did someone stay out that long? I don't know what's going on, but someone just pitted. Let's get a update. So it's Bobby Labonte. Let's get a race stat update. So yes, it looks like Wallace and Labonte stayed out a tremendously long time. They, they ran, what, 25 laps on one tank of fuel. Almost 25 laps on a tank of fuel, man. Holy cow. There is no... There's no way, not even if you made your efficiency maxed out, there's no way you can run 25 laps on fuel. I mean, that is just, just, yeah, that's just game breaking almost. I mean, there's no way. It's impossible to run that many laps on one tank of fuel. That is crazy. That is some just next level stuff. Unless, unless they pitted during that caution, that might be what they did. They might have pitted during that caution period. So maybe that's what happened. They pitted. They they took the penalty from being all the way in the back when everyone else pitted. They cycled ahead. They became a lap ahead. That that would be more realistic than them staying out 25 laps. So I think that might be what happened here. Uh, the Checker Auto Parts 500 is Labonte and uh, Wallace were trying to steal a win out catch a late caution pit when everyone else is one lap down, trap them, and then steal the win. Anyways, though, we are running 18th. Jeff Burton's going to try to just dive bomb it. I'm going to block him. I'm going to tick him off. Because he's running me all the way down the wall. But if we can hold on to the car just a little bit longer, we might be able to get this top 20. Phoenix is a track that I've just never been good at, to be honest. It's just, it's a tough track, man. It's flat. It's like New Hampshire. I mean, New Hampshire, I've, I've ran good on a lot of NASCAR games there. I mean, NASCAR is six. Every time I race there, I've won in modifieds. And why is my car just not turning there? That's weird. Hang it. We need to get around Burton. Car just will not turn as sharp as I want it. Very low fuel. We got enough fuel. We better have enough fuel. I'm gonna start saving a little bit. Oh, are you kidding me? We're not going to make it, guys. We're going to be out of gas. 
I'm just gonna hope for a caution. Number 23 is outside. Wow. Number one is right behind you. You're clear. White flag. I can't compete for the top 20. I'm just gonna have to just just putt putt around the track. Gill tanks out. We just ran out of gas on the front straightaway, the worst possible place on the racetrack. Last lap. I thought we had enough gas, guys. I thought we did, but turns out we're not not gonna even be able to finish the race. Oh, that suck. But we'll be able to cruise. Oh, thanks, Marlin. We'll finish 40th. Man. That just went to bad to worse. Pretty quickly. Jeff Gordon's going to win here at Phoenix. Bobby Labonte and Wallace, they, they steal a top five. But, man, heartbreaking finish. Man. That sucks. We still made a pile of cash, though, I'll tell you that, but, man, that just, that just, God, man, we were so close. One lap shy, Tony Stewart finishes seventh, Gordon gains a little bit of points, but not much, I mean, it's still not enough. He gained, like, 40 points, still not enough. Wow. That is a tough pill to swallow, but it's okay, guys, you know, we came home practically dead last today, but it was because of fuel mods. Man, I should have stayed out one extra lap. I thought we had enough. Boy, was I wrong. So, that's going to be the end of this episode. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up and to subscribe to Diecast Buffet. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you're having a great one out there. And Diecast Buffet, signing off.